Hi, I'm Charlotte Fassa, second year computational neuroscience PhD student at the Donders Institute. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about learning math by yourself for computational neuroscience. So based on my previous video on how to learn computational neuroscience by yourself, a self-study guide, I decided to make a follow-up videos for this series because I decided that I think I didn't go into depth enough on some of the subjects and mathematics being one of them. A lot of you have asked for more resources on how to really learn mathematics by yourself. So so today I will dive into the top three topics that I think you need to learn, which is linear algebra, calculus and statistics and probability theory, those two combined. And I think if you learn these three topics, you will really be set on your computational neuroscience journey and go through it quite smoothly, at least in the mathematics part. I also want to ask you if you have any question on how to learn computational neuroscience by yourself, please put it in the comments below because I do look at it and I will decide if I will make another video on how to learn computational neuroscience more smoothly. So put all your questions and queries down in the comments below and let's begin. So the first thing I would do is kind of to get an introduction into math is to follow the course Introduction to Mathematical Thinking on Coursera. I really like the idea of this course because I think that math is not only something you learn but it's also a way of thinking. So it's a way of reasoning that's quite different from how we reason in daily life normally. And I think following this course you will get kind of an introduction in how to really get a grasp of mathematical thinking. So I will recommend a lot of courses from MIT and that's because I really like the course setup of MIT. You can get the lectures but you can also get the lecture notes and you can look at the videos and also there are a lot of extra reading materials for example so the books are also placed on there and I think that just gives you a lot of material to work with. Another thing I really like from the MIT courses is that they put their exams online. So once you feel comfortable with a topic, you can try to take the exam and that will really tell you if you learned the topic well. And I think for mathematics, this is super important because sometimes we think that we know the math well, but we actually only understand a small part of the theory and cannot really apply it. So for linear algebra, there are a few things you need to know. That's vector spaces, linear transformation, matrices and their operations, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and this is just among others. So the first course I would take is 18.06, uh, which is the linear algebra course on the MIT website. I will also put all the resources down below so you can just look it up. And with that, I would read the book by Gilbert Strang on linear algebra and its application. And I think if you follow this course really in depth that you will already have a really good grasp on linear algebra. I would also recommend the series Essence on Linear Algebra by three blue and one brown. I think they explain it in a really nice well-rounded manner that's not too hard to understand. And lastly if you don't really like the MIT course setup I also like the course from Khan Academy on Linear Algebra. I kind of like how Khan Academy sets up their courses with a lot of practice materials so I think that's also a good option. So what you might use it for in computational neuroscience is mostly like PCA, ICA is applied a lot and just in general linear algebra and working with matrices is used a lot for computational neuroscience because all the data we get is in this matrix format so you have to be able to manipulate matrices and uh, multiply them with each other, know the inner product, the outer product, these kind of things are just really important. So the next skill I want to dive into is probability and statistics and I combined these two because they're pretty similar in their reasoning in mathematics. For statistics there are different types of skills that you need. So one of them is just summary statistics. So you need to know things like the mean, the mode, the median. If you've done a bachelor in a science subject you will know these things. And also aside from summary statistics it's also good if you do experiments to know experimental statistics. So how to do a t-test, a z-test, an f-test, all these words that you may have heard before. And also in general just to know how to 
calculate p-values, for example, and how to do a Bonferroni correction. These are topics you kind of will have to dive into. And then for probability theory, it's good to know general probabilistic measures, to know the Bayes theorem, for example, chain rule, among others. So the courses that I would recommend are, again, one from MIT, that's 18.05, which is called Probability and Statistics. There's also a course on Khan Academy, again, if you don't like the MIT courses, on statistics and probability. Then I also really like this website, it's called Seeing Theory, and I love the kind of visualizations they made. For example, you can click on chance events, and then you can really play around with the different probability theories they show. I love this website for a more intuitive grasp on probability theory. And I also personally really like this Think Stats book, which if you know how to program is a really nice way to learn statistics through programming. So if you're more a programmer, I would go that route maybe if you like that kind of information as well. Then the next skill you need is calculus. So calculus is quite wide. For calculus, there's derivative, gradients, integration, but also multivariate calculus to take it a step further. I, again, really like the book from Gilbert Strang for this, which is called Calculus. Um, it, I think that's a really good way to learn it. On MIT, there are also different courses. So there's 18.01 and 18.02. So these courses are about calculus and multivariate calculus. So I think they really go into depth in these two topics quite well. There's also 18.03, which is a little bit more about differential equations. So what you might use calculus for is just everything, I think, like derivative optimization techniques, all kind of programming algorithms are based on calculus in their essence. So, so to get a good feeling of calculus and to really grasp how to implement it is quite important, I think. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit more about how I would learn mathematics if I would go about learning it by myself, because learning mathematics by yourself is a really challenging undertaking, especially if you're not used to mathematical thinking. One of the first resources I want to give you is this MIT challenge by Scott Young. So Scott Young is someone that really inspired me. He learned a computer science major by himself in 12 months, whereas normally it would take four years. And he did this all by self-learning and he recorded his self-learning journey in its entirety on his blog. So if you're going on a self-learning journey, I would follow his blog and see how he went about it. He really explains how he learned the material and then takes or took the exams that helped him to learn all of this material. So I think that's a really inspiring resource. But I also want to give you seven tips to learn mathematics by yourself if you're planning to do it. So the first thing is to know what you're learning math for. I think if you're on this video, you kind of know you're learning it for computational neuroscience. But in general, it's good to have this goal really clear because there will be points in your learning journey that you will falter or will kind of fall off the wagon because learning mathematics is hard. So it's good to know what you're doing it for such that you can always have this in your back of your mind when times get rough. The second thing is practice is key, especially with mathematics. Practice is really important. You can understand the theory sometimes, but if you cannot implement it, you will still not pass your exam on mathematics. So what I did when I was learning theoretical physics for my bachelor's, we had to learn a lot of mathematics and I just worked every day for two hours in the morning on mathematics and doing this really challenged my brain and really allowed me to get into this mathematics mindset and I would only do practice questions so I wouldn't look at any theory I wouldn't read anything I would just do the practice questions and if I pass them go to the next practice question and try to finish as many of them in two hours and I think doing this will really challenge you mathematically and will really speed up your learning process number three for me is to work on new and old problems so something that I learned when I was learning learning mathematics is that it's sometimes easy when you finish a problem to just skip over it without really going into depth as to how you finished it. I think a good way is to try to solve a problem three times at least because sometimes if you solve it one time you don't fully understand it or you're not fast enough because in mathematics you also have to be quite fast at solving the problems. So what I would do is I would put three circles next to a problem and if I solved it 
for example, in the first week, one time, then I would try to solve it again a month later and again two months later. Then I really knew that I know the steps that had to be taken to solve the different mathematical problems. So solve new and old problems. Then the fourth thing is to memorize key concepts. I know everyone in mathematics and also physics always tells you to not memorize and just understand everything. But I think at a certain point you will come in your mathematics journey that it's just too much to keep everything in your mind because you can derive everything from scratch but this will just take too long so i think if you have this graph of mathematics i think it's good to learn all the central notes by heart such that you can just move to the graph a little bit quicker because if you every time have to derive the central notes from scratch that will just take up too much space so it's kind of good to have these central notes always in the front of your mind. So the fifth thing I would go to is to understand your mistakes. I think when we make a mistake in mathematics, it's sometimes easy to look at the solutions, then solve it again and just think you learned it. But sometimes it's nice to really understand why you made a certain mistake. Because it doesn't always have to be a mistake because the way you solve mathematical problems, sometimes they have different solutions. So it's good to really understand why you took a certain journey or why you weren't able to solve something, for example. Then the sixth thing is consistency. We kind of talked about this a little bit before, but just be consistent with your journey. I think doing 10 minutes every day is better than to spend an hour in the weekends, for example. So consistency is one of the most important things for your mathematics journey. And then the seventh thing, and this is really when you know you've become a mathematician in some sense, is if you apply the mathematics outside. So I remember quite clearly that when I was learning different engineering techniques that I was riding my bike at a certain point and I was thinking about like rotational speed and torque and these kind of concepts whilst riding my bike and I think as you learn mathematics better it's nice to think about the concepts when you're outside as well such as you can just kind of challenge your mathematical mind and this will really sharpen you outside of your true learning time as well. So these were all my resources and tips and tricks for learning mathematics for computational neuroscience. If you have any tips for me or any resources that you really love, please put them down in the comments below because I always give them to students next year and I learn a lot from you guys as well. And also if you again have any queries on computational neuroscience, I would also love to read those and try my best to answer them and otherwise see you next week. Bye.